Your Excellency, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. What is your message? What would your message be to uh, to to the country? This is time to reflect on the life of President Rupia Bozanibanda. All the statements have been made. Obviously, he was not an angel. He had his own feelings, one way or the other, just like all of us. But if we learn to dialogue honestly with one another, as we have experienced during the days of mourning, probably we can get somewhere as a country. Dialogue, genuine dialogue between all of us, those who were in government before and those who are in now. But what we are seeing is hypocrisy, where people say good things and they do bad things. And if we can expunge the hypocrisy from our lives and just say it as it is, between now and going into the future, so that's what we are learning from Rupia Banda's legacy. Yeah. People have said a lot of good things. May those good things become part of us. Thank you so much. Please. Thank you. Right. Uh, uh, thank you very much for an opportunity to make a comment on the uh, funeral and burial of our, our fourth uh, Republican president. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Zambian people for once again rising to the occasion to mourn our fourth Republican president, President Tupia Banda, in a manner that is uh, uh, befitting of a person that has provided a service to this country for all the years that we know of him having dedicated his life to the serving not only of this country but the continent and the globe. Uh, I'm compelled to make a comment um, in relation to the fundamental truth that uh, the former president, President Edgar Chagalungu, um, said yesterday, which has attracted uh, some kind of debate. Uh, I think the advice and the sentiment of the former head of state yesterday was on point. As a people, we should never be afraid to confront each other with truth. The level of hypocrisy across the board, I think, is pathetic. Historically, as a people, we have always only celebrated people when they die. You have, for example, President Kaunda, who at the time that he left office, he was verified, called a thief, his family, children called thieves, until in recent times, that's when we began to have positive sentiments coming in appreciation of his service to the country. But look at the outpouring, you know, uh, tributes, and the uh, state positive statements that were made at the time that he died. The second Republican president, Dr. Frederick Chiluba, when he left office, he was called a thief, verified, persecuted, even at the point of him being acquitted. To his death, he was still being called a thief. But at the time that he was being buried, Everybody was up showering praises, how that he was a father of democracy and the one that laid the foundation for economic uh, growth that we've experienced as a country. Mwanawasa, it was the same. Now we're talking about uh, President Upia Banda. But look at President Michael Sata, it was the same. We condemn one another, condemn leaders, and only to come and celebrate them in their death. That is a, a high level of hypocrisy. Today we have a former head of state in Edgar Chagalongo. As we speak now, President Lungu is being verified, is being, uh, you know, persecuted, his family, his children, everybody's calling him a thief, somebody who never did anything to this country, even when we know that the infrastructure development that we are celebrated as a country to have achieved and attend was achieved under his watch. Ms. Aika Indeichlema today 
is trotting the whole corners of this country commissioning with his ministers projects that were left by the patriotic front government that is never appreciated they never even have the courtesy of referring to those achievements they pretend as if they are the ones who have achieved now what makes even the the fundamental truth of hypocrisy real is to have a head of state for example at showground during the funeral of the official funeral of um, uh, President Upia Banda suggest that the reason why opposition leaders and others are participating in the funeral is because they have created a conducive environment for that kind of thing to happen, which is very unfortunate. That statement is far from the truth. The truth is that now we have in opposition leaders who are civil and are able to distinguish between national events and indeed political events. A funeral of that nature is a national event. And I'm aware that the reason why today we can congregate in one locality and be able to mourn President Rupia Banda is because the opposition have chosen to rise above petty politics and not politic with everything and be able to attend such national events. Ms. Aka in the HRM in opposition with his UPND, they politicize everything including funerals. And today he can't turn around and such, such, trying to abuse the civility of his colleagues and suggest that it's because you have created an, an enabling environment. If you remember, whenever he chose to attend any event, particularly funerals, President Akainde and other opposition leaders were usually given the front row as a way of appreciating that they are stakeholders in development. What has he done so far? Whether it was at uh, the, the showgrounds, whether it is uh, in, at cathedral, or indeed at a barrel site. Opposition leaders, by design, not by default, by design, the tags for their sitting arrangement was far at the back. The sitting of President Edgar Chagarung on the front row is because he's a former head of state. And today he cannot be used as uh, an example of embracing the opposition. Because uh, President Lungu saved and is no longer in office. In New Patriotic Front, we have an acting president in Given Luwina. If he wanted to demonstrate to Zambians and the visitors that he is embracing even the opposition, why was he not pari or indeed acknowledging such leaders and giving them the rightful place in such an occasion? So, hypocrisy is at the center of how we conduct ourselves as Zambians. We never celebrate the input of people. We condemn them. Whether it is the president, ministers, you have verified even when you did your best to uplift the lives of uh, you know, the Zambian people. So all I can say is that I think it's important that Zambians reflect on that statement. It was fundamental and it is sinks squarely in what is happening. And we know that there's a saying that the guilt are always afraid. If the shoe fits, wear it. Thank you very much.